Yeah, I guess we're live. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Pierce. I'm with Cerna Solutions, and I'm excited. I've been asked to host this Ask the Expert session. And so the topic I chose was Service Portal and Angular Providers. So if you've ever come across the concept of directives and services, I will even get into modules maybe a little bit if we have time. Um, but we just wanted to take the time to kind of simplify that for you and uh, uh, you know, take something that, that might seem a little scary to a beginner and really break it down into its components so you can see that there are actually some pretty simple ways that you could start using these and, uh, and make your code a little funner, um, a little more reusable. All right, so it looks like we've got about 28 people in, uh, 20 or 30. So feel free to post questions uh, as we go along. You don't want to make this uh, interactive. Uh, I also have my colleague, Annalise, uh, with me. She's, uh, she's just dialed in on audio. So if you want to say hello, feel free to Annalise. Just let people hear your voice. So they don't wonder who this is when if, if you chime in later on. Hi, this is uh, Annalise Gray. I am a UI developer here at Cerna. Yeah, thanks for joining, Annalise. So, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we want to make this a bit of a dialogue. So, uh, like I said, feel free to post questions as we go along, uh, either in the YouTube chat, uh, but ideally, uh, you could put them in over at the, um, the community, the ServiceNow community. I use the same link that you, you used to get here to, to get to that page. Uh, all right, so if you got any questions as we're going, feel free to pop them in there. Um, all right, so just uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I won't spend long, I'm not a new egomaniac. I'm the Service Portal Practice Manager at Cerner Solutions. I've been building portals on ServiceNow since about 2010. Uh, you know, so a CMS for, for many years and then, then Service Portal. I worked for LinkedIn for two years and then uh, another service now partner before that for five years. Uh, so I've had the privilege to spend many years here working in portals and, uh, and it's been a lot of fun. Okay, without any further ado, let's, uh, let's start talking about our topic. So in AngularJS, it, you have a, a very modular framework, right? The idea is to make very reusable code, so you end up writing less code. Um, so you might be familiar with a lot of elements of that already, like ng repeat. Well, really, all of your ng directives that you can put into your template to, to loop things, uh, show and hide elements um, contingently or conditionally. Uh, so a lot of really you know great things that you can do, even just with very basic knowledge of AngularJS. Um, but you can go even uh, way more advanced. We're going to keep it basic today uh, and just show some very simple ways of, of utilizing these things. Uh, and to do that, we'll use a, a My Tickets list as an example. So let's take a look at the, our, our list first. So here's our list widget. Um, I think there might be a, a little tiny delay in, the, uh, in my voice when I'm clicking on, so I'll try to maintain a, a good pace. Okay, you might see some, um, as I work you know, through these code examples, I, I put these all together last night just so that you can save time and, and not have to, to type all these out. Um, so we'll have several examples of different ways of doing things throughout the code here. So I've got this tickets list. Uh, and to do that, I just, um, you know, simple glide record and, and using uh, the template table to, to build this. And um, so to start, you can see we just have a very simple list. And in this list, we have incidents and requests. So take a look at the HTML template here for this. Actually, I'm already using a directive. Let me comment that out. So this 
is the longhand way, right? In the HTML template, you actually write out the template for how you want each ticket to look. And it works fine. If I say this. So what if, what if we know that we're going to have to write this template over and over? And um, of course, you know, we've already saved some code by using the ng repeat. But what if in other widgets, there are other widgets where we're going to want to print the same type of element? Um, so rather than defining this template here and also in the template of another widget, uh, we can use the concept of a directive. Um, now, what if, now, what if we wanted this widget and this widget to talk to each other? So when I select a filter option here, it actually filters the list. Well, then I can use an Angular provider called a service. So let's go ahead and take a look at those before we go any farther. I'm going to go to the Angular provider. And I've got a couple in here ready to go. So this one, demo ticket. Take a look at this. Now, I've got a lot of notes in here just so that we can kind of ex explain the properties. Um, but most importantly, what's there is the template. This is the same exact template that we have right here. And so remember, we want to always make things as reusable as possible. So if I could take all this code and stick it in this directive and then just reuse this directive, I've really saved myself a, a, lot, of, a lot of code maintenance. And also, I'm increasing the, uh, the, the scope of what I can actually do with this code. Um, so, so a directive and a, and a service, they are, are, are similar to each other. They're both, in a sense, uh, object constructors, you know, or, or a way to, um, to package up some functions and, uh, and definitions and, uh, and provide them to our widgets uh, in a very reusable manner. Uh, so if you so take a, so this is a very simple example of a, uh, of a directive. You can see we just have a function. The name of the function is actually the, the name of our, our record here. And so we want to be able to reference this from the HTML uh, template. So instead of writing all of this, it would be great if I could do something like this. Where I just have one HTML template and then I can refer to that directive uh, in a number of ways. So you can see right here, I, I have the class name demo ticket. And uh, just a quick note about AngularJS and, and its naming conventions. So when you name something like this, like for example, our directive, uh, when you actually consume it in the template, uh, Angular normalizes this name. And so it takes it from camel case and puts a space in, in there. So this is actually how I'm going to refer to it in my template. So that could be a, a confusing point for a lot of people when they start this. Um, OK, so the restrict property. Th these are the, the directive definition, or this is the de directive definition object. And, and so this is going to uh, allow me to control to a very fine level how uh, this directive is included uh, whenever I call it. So restrict, it's, um, really what you're doing with this is defining how the directive is called. So if I'm using C, so I can see, then I'm going to call it by class name. I could easily change this to E for element. If I save that. Now I'm going to update the template here. And instead of calling it by class name, here, let's just uh, let's kind of this other stuff out really quickly. So we don't get tons of boxes. 
Okay, so if instead of calling it by class name, we actually can create a, an element with that name. Let's save this. Now instead of using this template, it's actually going to use the template that's defined in our directive down here with the template property. So let's give that a refresh. Oh, we didn't get anything. Let's, let's debug that and find out why. Oh, silly mistake. Close the tags properly, that might help. All right, we still didn't get anything. Let's see here. So if we double check how we're including this, demo dash ticket, that's the name of our, our directive. Oh, you know what? It's still, um, it's still on C. It didn't say properly when I changed it to E. I wonder why. Okay. All right, now here is, um, here's something you're gonna wanna be aware of. If you notice, I've got my widget open that I was working in, um, but I also have the, the provider that's attached to the widget. Um, now, see, I can open up my, actually, that's not it. Um, it's this widget here, demo ticket. If you have these open in both places, so see, I've got this directive open in the widget editor, um, and I also have the directive open here, uh, you're going to have trouble if you're going to, you're going to be overwriting yourself all the time. So you've got to close one of them down. So I'll just close this one down since I've got it open in my, in the widget editor list. So we'll change it to true, to E, so we call it by element. So you might, uh, <laughs> I've gone in circles uh, for, for way too long before trying to wonder why saving my, uh, my provider uh, kept, why it kept getting overwritten by my, my changes in other places. Okay, so you can see now this template is coming from, oh, where did it go? Let it close down, let's go find that. All right here, it's coming from, from the template defined here. Now let's take this a step further. Um, actually here, before we do that, let's, let's take a look through the properties of a, a directive and we'll just kind of explain the differences that, that are in here. Uh, so the different ways that you can call it, like I showed you, you can either do class name or by element. Uh, you can also call it via name of an attribute in the HTML element. Um, or you can even call it with comments. Uh, so there are many different ways that you can refer to a directive. Uh, replace, so this is just a, uh, a property that's going to indicate whether or not the template that you provide is going to totally replace um, the element uh, that is calling the directive. Um, so quite often if you are providing a, a full template uh, that's going to be true. Okay, the scope property. This one can be a little confusing, um, but we'll explain it in a nutshell first. So if it's true, then this directive is going to have two-way binding access to the parent widget's scope. So let's just explain what that means really quickly here. Um, so this is my, my tickets list widget right here. And if we check out the scope of that, okay, you can see, we've got the C data object and our tickets. 
Um, so all of this is, is part of our, our widgets scope. Um, now, if we'd like to, to extend this to the, um, to the directive that's used to render each one of these, uh, we have options. It can either be one way, meaning um, we can change the parent and it's reflected in, in the directive, but changing it in the directive is not reflected in the parent. Uh, so that would be false. Quick second, somehow uh, got some audio issues all of a sudden here. I think that's been resolved. I don't know, maybe Lisa, if, if you can check, it sounds like we're getting a double feed now for the, the, the hangout. Like I can hear myself talking back to me. Oh, check. I'll keep going. Yeah, keep, it's about whatever your YouTube um, might be um, showing the, the volume, but I'm not hearing any. Um, Doubles. Okay. All right. So for good on your end, I'll just. Sorry. Give me just a moment while we figure this out. That's okay. I'm going to go check to see if we've got some questions. If you're on the YouTube page, you can pop out the live chat and then close the actual YouTube page. All right, we'll just try to keep going. It's uh, still here, and it's all getting fed back to me, but I'll just turn my volume down and try to work this out. Okay, so we had our, our scope options. Right, true means that you're going to create two-way binding uh, so that whatever uh, happens in the parent um, happens in the directive. Whatever happens in the directive uh, is also happening in the parent. Um, false just creates one way from the parent to the directive. Uh, otherwise, you can create a blank in isolated scope, or you can populate a new isolated scope with any kind of uh, properties that you want. Um, so this definitely gets into more advanced usage, but when you do see um, things being passed in uh, via the scope property, um, you can see that it's actually, you know, the concept is, is pretty simple. It's just you got a lot of different options for what you can do. So that's why it seems rather complex. Um, all right, maybe we'll, we'll play with a couple of these examples in a few minutes here. Uh, but in addition to, to restrict, replace, scope, you've got your link function. Um, that's where ideally you would do DOM manipulations if you were going to need to do that. Um, for example, you want to hijack a, a, a click event or something. Um, you can also provide your own controller for this directive. Uh, and then finally, a couple different ways of including a template. Uh, you can either just write your template right here. Uh, you'll also see that in there are other widgets out of box that uh, you can provide a template URL. Um, so if you've got a, uh, you know, some other HTML file stored somewhere, um, you can provide the name of that file here. But mostly, uh, the, you'll find the out of box widgets all making use of, of just scripting out the template uh, as a string. All right. So what are we going to do with this? We're going to take this and, and do uh, a little more with it. Let's see what kind of examples we had. So as we mentioned, there are different ways of calling it by, by class name, by element name. Um, but but look, at, look at what we have here. Um, Actually, this instance is OK, because what I was going to point out is, is that we have one template right now for, um, for all of these tickets, whether they're an incident or a request. Um, so if we look at that. So in that template, we're showing the item number and the item short description. Um, but what if you didn't have a short description for your request items? In this demo instance, you actually do, but I've seen a lot of customer instances where um, the short description doesn't get populated. You 
you would rather use, say, for example, the item field. Um, so what if you did want to provide a different template uh, based on some, some kind of criteria? Well, it, it's, it's easy to, to include a, uh, an HTML file. So let's do that first. I'll show you in the server script where we're actually going to get the, the HTML file to use as a template from. Um, I just close it down. So I'm using the um, SPNG template table to store a couple of very simple templates. I'll just show you that. There is no module for it. You could, you could create one if you wanted, but otherwise you just got to get to that table manually. OK. Um, so here I've got two templates. Uh, I just used the same prefix, demo template underscore, and then I followed it by the name of the table that I want to use it, the template for. So if we look at them, so it's pretty simple. I've just got the field specified that I want to use. So for instance, I want to use short description. For SE rec item, I want to use item. So, so this is really, I mean, for this very basic example, my, my template is very simple, right? So the idea is that I want to include this template inside this other template. All right, so This is where it gets a little confusing. You want to pay close attention. So this is the template that I am using right now. But I don't want to use this one anymore. I would rather use the template that I, I determined or that I got from my server script from the SP and G table. And I'm not really going into exactly what I did right here because it's not really related to services or directives. Um, if you notice, this was, the, this was the piece that was included in the template. So I'm going to replace this. Yeah, let's just, uh, I'm going to just take it off completely. And I'm going to replace it with this include. So you could use the native Angular directive ng include, and I'm providing it the ID of the, the ng template record that I wanted. So what this is going to do is when, when our server script populates the template ID for each one of our tickets, um, it's going to, it's going to, for incidents, it's going to use the incident template for, for requests, it's going to use the request template. So that's the concept with this. And um, again, I apologize if there's pauses here. It's just uh, I've got this stream coming back at me in my headphones. And uh, you know, I'm actually just going to take my headphones out. So um, Lisa or Annalise, if you need to talk to me, talk me to the, the comments. Uh, all right, so this is going to be a lot better um, <laughs> without the stream coming back in my ear. OK. You know, I'm just going to delete this part of the template. That's left over from something I copied and pasted. I'm just going to take that out. All right. So now we conditionally have a template being included uh, in the template of this directive. So yeah, we're getting uh, kind of smoke and mirrors here, right? Templates within templates. All right, let's save this. All right. Now you notice we lost our short description for uh, for the request item. If we take a look at that. Let's see if we can figure out why. All 
All right, we're going to want to look at the uh, the template that we created for it, which is right here. Um, all right, so it's trying to show the item property. Let's dig into that. So here's the item we're repeating. You can see that item is coming through as null. So let's figure out, uh, let's follow that trail and see where we're trying to get the item property. See, we're getting it here. So for each ticket that we get, um, I'm just using get record values, just as a quick and dirty way to, uh, uh, to, to get the record values. And it's possible that for that request item that there isn't a, an item. Um, so for the sake of this, let's go ahead and just change this back to short description. Um, let's just hard code this in just so we can illustrate that we're getting a different template for the, the request versus the incidents. So we'll say for the request, we'll want to preface this with item order. Let's update that. Let's go and change our incident one a little bit too. And we'll just call this like issue description. Okay. So refreshing this, I should see the, those updated templates take effect. All right, there we go. And now we can see down in request, I have a different template being used than the template being used for incidents. So let's just review really quickly what we did to, to do that. Um, so here in the SPNG template table, I created two new templates. And uh, if you remember, those are very, very simple. Just, it's just straight up HTML for what I want to include. And I can go ahead and, and refer to my, my scope here, you know, just as I would, if I was writing this in the, the body HTML of the widget. Okay, so now where do these come into play? These, these templates, are assigned to each ticket here in the server script. So here, this is where I'm just defining which one gets used. So for each, for each table that, we, um, that we're running this for us here, we're, we're getting tickets for incident, we're getting tickets for request item. So I'm, I'm determining what the title of that, that NB, NG template is going to be. And then I just assign it as a, a ticket property. So that's how we're including one template uh, versus another, depending on the table that the ticket comes from. Okay, and then just to remind you how we're including this now in the template is just via attribute, I'm sorry, via element name. All right, so now let's take this a little bit farther. Um, let's do something else with this. Uh, let's, um, let's see here, what's on my agenda? Uh, now let's create a filter for this. Let's start using the services. We've done enough with the directives. Um, actually, there's, let me, before we move on to services, let's show another cool thing we can do with directives. And um, so say you wanted an on-click event. Uh, for this. So, you know, we'll just have to kind of be a little arbitrary with our, our reason for doing this. But say I wanted to, uh, whenever I clicked on one of these, uh, I want to run a function. So, directors are the perfect thing to do that as well. Um, let's go and take a look at our, let's make sure that we've created a directive for this already. Um, Okay, so I have a directive that I wrote here called demo on click. So let's look at the properties here. So restrict A, it means that we're going to call this by attribute. And I'll show you that in a moment. Um, the scope, 
is uh, we're setting a, an isolated scope for this directive now. So it's, uh, it's going to be completely separate from the widget that's calling it. And the way that we'll pass it data, so, so we can still map data to this directive, even though it has an isolated scope. Um, we're going to do it via the, the demo on click attribute. Um, so I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a moment here. And then you can use the link function then to react to the click event. Um, so just pass in the, the element. Uh, and, and this is, if you're familiar with jQuery, you know, the, the, the link function will, will feel right at home to you. Um, but you can do all kinds of really fun things here. But I'm, I'm just using the element um, to listen for the click to call the function and do something. I better actually make that a function. And when I do that, I'm just going to log the data that was passed to this function, or this directive. All right, so I've got a, this one ready to go. Um, let me just make sure. Now that one, actually, because um, if you notice, we don't have the replace property here, like we have for the other um, directive because I don't have any HTML that I want to replace, right? This is just, uh, this is, you know, I, I'm linking a function to it. I'm not replacing it in any way. So in this case, I don't actually have to attach this directive to a widget. Uh, and what I mean by that, if you're looking at your widget in the widget view, if you go to the dependencies um, drop down. See, this is a little misleading because there, there are dependencies that you can attach to your widget, then there are Angular providers that you can attach to your widget. These are the Angular providers that I've attached, except they show up in the dependencies dropdown. So it's, just be aware of that. The naming isn't very consistent. Um, but if I go and look at this widget in the, uh, just the, the table form view, so demo tickets list, If I go down to related lists, you can see that's where I've got my Angular providers. So ticket, so that's the, the, the template directive we worked with. This is a service we're about to work with. Um, and you can also see, I, I also had to attach the, the templates that we created for the incident and request. Okay, but if you notice the directive that I, I just looked at, the demo on click directive is not here. Um, but that's okay, it doesn't have to be there. Because when you call a, uh, a directive that is, is not replacing the HTML, um, and there might be some other stipulations around this, uh, you know, some more science to when or when or not, you have to attach it. But I can go ahead and use this, that directive now. So demo on click, and I can pass it, um, an object of, uh, of properties too. So let's just say um, um, it goes over. All right, so let's save that. I'm gonna refresh this page. And so now nothing will change in appearance. Um, we launch the console. What I would expect is that when I click on one of these, I get that console log now. And if I don't, that's a fun chance to debug. Let's figure out why. Okay. What we might want to do is just start out more simply. In that provider. In our on click directive, let's um, here, let's just give it a, an isolated scope and um, Let's just see if we can get this working here. Now these can be rather finicky, so if, if I don't get this click working right away, I'm just gonna 
going to skip it. We don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, yeah, so that element on click needs to be debugged a little bit better. Um, and I'm not going to spend the time doing it now, but this is, you know, the, the basic concept is, is demonstrated for you here. Um, you know, just, I need to debug this to see exactly why this isn't firing. Um, you know, it's probably just a simple syntax issue, but uh, yeah, suffice to say that, you know, these directives can be used for a lot of things, um, not just providing templates. All right, let's talk about services a little bit here. Um, if you've noticed on the page, I have this tickets filter. Um, let's go into that tickets filter widget and we'll kind of start from scratch with it or we'll build it up slowly. Because our, our use case here, what we're, we're, we're going to demonstrate is that uh, we can get these two widgets to talk to each other, right? Uh, so when I select one of these, it gets reflected in, in this list over here. And, you know, being able to do that without having to go back to the server and rerun any kind of queries. Um, so if you remember, we, we've got all of our, um, oh, if you look, we've lost our, we're not using our templates anymore. Um, let's just, let's just resolve that one really quick. Let's take a look at our, our tickets list. Make sure we're still using the, the right. Okay, let's just not use this one. Let's use one of these others now. All right, so I'm kind of back to where I was a few steps earlier, calling it by element name. Um, so we should be using the directive or the template that comes from the directive. Um, here, let's take a look at our directive again. Calling it by element, include, Item.template ID. So you see what I'm debugging here is that you know we had updated our templates so that uh, the rhythms were also using the, the short description field, and we added a label to the beginning of, of the description. Um, so let's just figure out why that's not happening anymore. Um, so first, we're going to text check our templates. Our service catalog one. Oh, you know what? Same thing that happened before happened here. So you got to, like I said, you got to be very careful. If you've got this widget open or a widget open in the widget editor view and this widget has dependencies such as templates and Angular providers, um, you're, you're capturing a state of all of that here. And if, so if I've updated my template over in this view, and save it, but then over here, even though I don't have those templates visible anywhere, I guess I have them available, the, the drop down, but I'm not looking at them, and I were to hit save, I'm reverting back to the, the old version of this. So, um, so lesson learned there. I keep biting myself with that all the time. So let's open them up here. We'll add them back in. All right, we're also going to look at the incident one. We'll just close all these other stuff down. It gets a little crowded. Um, okay, uh, we'll also change this to short description. And this is new here, being able to access the dependencies and templates from the widget editor view. Um, well, we had dependencies, I think, with the last release, like Jakarta, 
Um, but templates, I believe that's new with Kingston. Because before you had to go out to the, um, the record view of the widget to access this stuff. So it's nice to see it finally showing up here in Kingston. Um, all right, so refreshing our page now. Should be using those, those updated templates for real this time. All right, so back to what we expected to see. All right. Um, okay, so each one of these tickets has a table associated with it, right? If we go inspect the scope of each item, I see I've got the sys class name property. It's going to tell me which incident to use. So I would like to use this property to, to filter this list. So I've created this widget right here, tickets filter, and I'm going to open that up here. So we can take a look at it. Now, how you populate this filter, there are all kinds of great dynamic ways you can do that, but I am just hard coding it. Um, so here in the widget, I'm just manually defining this array of, of filter items. So I have incident, I see rec item, I see rec item two. And um, now I have this one just to, uh, to demonstrate um, something else here in a few moments. Uh, but you can see both those have the same exact label requests and that's why we have two requests here in the filters um, just to disregard that for now go ahead and let that bug you and we'll we'll resolve it in a, a few minutes um, okay now take a look at our template for this so we can see um, we're just repeating item in c.controls.filters.items now you might expect it to be c.data.filters.items. So where is this controls coming in? Um, introducing Angular providers as a service. Uh, so a service is a, a script um, or object constructor that you can provide to your widgets, and they can share common uh, data, properties, functions, etc. So this provider, demo ticket service. Now, just to help clear things up here, you're gonna, you've been hearing the word Angular providers, dependencies, uh, directives, services. Um, maybe we'll just take a quick second here and clear that up. So, a, um, so directives and services are both found in the Angular providers module and service now. Um, right, that's the easiest way to remember it. There, and there's also a third type of Angular provider, and we'll show that, but we're not really going to talk about it um, just because we don't have a whole lot of time here. If I go to Angular providers, in this module, see we've got directives, services, and then there's a third of factory. Um, factory you can actually accomplish a factory with the service. Um, so uh, it gets a little esoteric um, at that point with you know, when to use a service in a factory. I do almost everything with, with directives and, and services, so we're just not gonna address factories today. Um, all right, so we've got this service that we created, demo ticket service, and we'll look at it in here. And you can see this is just a function that is defining a controls object now, I had it set up this way just for scalable reasons, because right? that filter here, this could have all sorts of things in there. It could have other filter types. You could have sorting options. Right? So I've just created a, um, this, this master object for controls that will have all the filters and stuff. It's just filters right now. Um, so it's going to hold the available filters and then the selected filters. Okay, so in this service, we're returning two functions. Um, get controls, which we'll be able to call these from our client controllers in the widgets to get access to uh, the, the scope of this service. Um, so get controls returns this object. 
Um, then we also have this select filter function, which we can call to um, when we click on a service or click on a filter. Um, so you can see that the input, the checkbox itself is calling select filter, C dot select filter item. Now, here's the link, and this is extremely important. We have this service, so we can inject it into our client script, or we, this is also called the client controller. Uh, and so now I can make use of this script just by referencing the name of it. So remember, this first had to get attached via the, um, uh, the record view of, of the widget in the, the Angular providers related list. Then I inject it into the client controller by name. And I'm going to uh, create a, a more localized name for that. So C ticket service equals that service. C dot controls. Now this is this is a property I'm defining now in my controller. Is going to call the get controls function, which just returns this controls object. So now I have a reference to this that I can use in my, my client script. And then I take it just a step further and I populate these, uh, the filters with the filters that I defined here. So this right here, data.filters, let me close this down. That's this right here. And this one, map to this one. So that's how I'm taking these filters from the server and putting them, populating a, uh, an object in the service uh, so that they can be used elsewhere. Okay, but the most important part of this, um, because let's see items, that's really just gonna stay here in, uh, in this widget here, because that's going to print out the, the filter items. Uh, but mostly it's the selections. It's the selections that I'm really interested in sharing with other widgets. Um, so let's, uh, let's, I'll show you how we do that. So all of this good stuff, this gets us this far, right? Prints us these options, uh, filter options on the page. Now let's open up our tickets list again. Put this down. All right. So right now we're not doing anything. Um, I mean, there, there's nothing about this line that will allow us to to filter um, based upon the, the, the selected filters. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is establish that mapping in our client script. So we're injecting the same exact service, demo ticket service. I'm going to do um, the same thing I did in the other widget where I established that mapping. Um, C controls is get controls. So now this is mapped to that master controls object. And I also have another function here, C.list filter. This is simply going to, um, to test whether or not an item in my tickets list matches one of my selected filters. So I'm not gonna get all the way into this. I mean, it's just a, just a couple you know, comparison functions. Um, okay, but now instead of this one, I'm going to, um, we actually, we'll, we'll just use that, we'll just update it. But I have it right here. So you can see, I'm doing. I'm going just straight to the data dot tickets. So this is this is straight from the server here. That's what we've been doing. We got the the, the records from the server, and we're just iterating through them. Um, but let's put a step in between there. So instead, we we want an or, or an array called filter, and we can actually create that right here. It's by calling this list filter function. So C data that tickets. So that same array, but now we're going to filter it. Oops. 
let's we'll go ahead and leave the order by on there. All right, so it's going to use this function now. We pass it to it the item, the current, you know, the, the current ticket being iterated on. Um, and then we can evaluate it. And if it matches one of the our selected filters, then we just return that item back to um, you know, back to the directive. Okay, so let's give this a save and uh, test it out. Nothing, let's see why. All right, so we have item, c.filtered. Oh, you know what? We forgot. And actually put this on the end over here. Just forgot our closing parenthesis. Okay, so we've got all of them to start, but if I select one of these, look at that, I don't have the request item anymore because it filtered out, because uh, that function ran and it said, okay, here's one that has a, uh, a table of, of SE rec item doesn't match the selected incident, leave it out. But if I go ahead and include this now, you see it shows back up. Or if I uncheck incidents, only the rhythm remains. So, so you can see as, as I check these, uh, we're maintaining the selections array from our uh, our service, right? This is what's getting updated here. We're adding and, and removing from the selections. And, um, and because both of these widgets are attached or have this service, uh, uh, they're referencing the same exact object. So, so that's just a nice little example of how we can talk to, to each other or, you know, we, we get, two widgets to share the same exact set of data. Um, okay, so one other thing that I'll do here, um, this isn't a provider or not an Angular provider. It's, uh, we're gonna include it as, as a, a UI script as a dependency. Um, we're gonna get this last requests filter out of here. Um, so of course now I'm just being very, you know, I'm doing this on purpose by, uh, oops, let's open up our, filter widget. So you remember I'm adding that one in purposely just you know just for the sake of simplifying this demo. Um, but we want to we want to make sure this is unique. Right? So what we can do is we can create a dependency. Actually I thought that I had this on here already. Um, I'm gonna open up this widget in the record view so we can just make sure that the right dependency is attached. Because so I created this earlier in preparation. Okay, so you can see in the dependencies related list, I have this demo filter duplicates. If I drill into that, what I see is this is actually just a JS include. And that JS include is calling um, this UI script called demo filter duplicates. So this is a module. Um, I'm not going to get. I'm not going to explain everything in here, but this is just another way of including code here. So here's my um, my module name. Here's the the, the filter function I want to call. Um, and so now let's close this down here. Let's use this one. So this is where I'm iterating through the, uh, the filters to show. And you can see, I'm including the name of that include, or the, this, the, the module, demo filter duplicates. And I'm passing to it a property that I want to, to filter on. So I said don't, so this function is gonna say, you know, don't show any duplicates or any items that have, let me put it a different way, only show unique labels. So, 
Um, so I'm hoping that we're only going to get one of these. So let's save that. Make sure everything is good here. My expectation is that one of these requests will drop off. And there we go. So, so that's another way of including reusable code uh, by, by creating modules. You upload those as, um, as includes to your site. As, or de U, UI script includes under the dependencies of your, your widget. Um, and you can do great stuff with that. All right, so you know there's a you know this is a pretty meaty concept. Um, you know it's very technical. I know we covered a lot of things. Um, I think you know hopefully most importantly we showed you just some examples, uh, some simple examples of how you can create uh, reusable code um, to use throughout your portal. Um, you know these were very you know some very arbitrary examples, but you get the point that. Uh, you know, modularizing your, your templates and, you know, functions that you're going to reuse commonly. Uh, you can use the, the Angular providers, the templates, um, the dependencies. There are several tables that, that you can use to, to help create all of that. Um, now, these examples that I've, I've used here, you know, just, uh, I've got a few templates of, of, for example, the module and the directive and the service. I'll post those in a blog post, so uh, be watching portalguru.cernasolutions.com, and uh, we'll see those up there soon. Also, really hope to see you out at Knowledge this year. Um, we'll be there. We're booth 2313, so 2313, uh, 2313. Find us there. Uh, we'll be demonstrating a, a very exciting uh, new feature from Cerna Solutions. Uh, it's our brand spanking new service portal accelerator, which is a combination of, of great new templates, um, great custom features, value add widgets, uh, methodology for, for implementing and, and designing. Uh, so very excited to, to feature that. Come stop by our booth and, and we'll have a great big iPad or iPhone there that you can uh, take a, a tour of our new accelerator on. Um, Okay, or feel free to email me, reach out to me on, on LinkedIn, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have about what we covered here today. And with that, I think we will um, we'll just see if there are any final questions here. Well, so far, I haven't seen any questions posted, but maybe they just need to absorb it some more, and they'll post some questions on the community. Okay. Oh, I don't think you can hear me, Jeff. Hello? All right. Okay. Um, well, thanks for attending and um, have fun with this. The sky's the limit.